Hello, John Talley here with Partzilla.com. Today, we're going to be taking a look at our 2015 Polaris Razor 900S. Now, this one's been sitting up in storage for a little while. We brought it out. It seemed to run fine. But after a while, it started to intermittently lose one of its cylinders. Now, that cylinder's dead completely. So what's going on with this? Is it just a spark plug that's been fouled out? Maybe one of our coils has gone bad? Or is it that the fuel injector for that particular cylinder is clogged up? Well, at this point, I don't know. But if you're interested, we'll hop back there, take a peek, and figure this one out. So if you're ready, let's go. Pretty simple to access this. Let's just get this cover out of the way. Now, with that cover out of the way, all we need to do is pull these two plug wires. That way, we can access the spark plugs. Yeah, that plug wire came off of there really easy. We can go ahead and determine which cylinder it is. I mean, I'm going to pull both plugs, but I'm just curious. Hmm. So that tells us our dead cylinder is right there. There we go. I don't have that Kung Fu grip I used to when I was younger. Age comes to us all, well, if we're lucky. All right, you can definitely see a difference, but is it completely fouled out? I really don't think so. I get the feeling this is gonna end up being an injector and hopefully we can just get these cleaned and that'll, that'll straighten it out. But for right now, let's cover up the, uh, the spark plug holes so nothing else falls in there. Plus I'm curious what our air filter looks like. So yeah, I think we may need to go ahead and get us a new air filter. Let's go ahead and clean out the debris that's in there because it'll suck it immediately into our new filter. What's the point of that? We're gonna go ahead and get this new filter popped in and then uh, put in the plugs, see what she does. If we need to dive further, then we do. Just make sure you push that all the way on. That way this back section We'll grab it and hold it in place. Glad I covered those up. All right, so we're gonna pop these plugs in and there's a great debate on this. Do you use anti-seize or not? Me, for the most part, I do. Especially, especially on anything in the marine environment, jet skis, marine engines, it, all of it. But there's a lot of arguments saying, all right, well, if you use this type of anti-seize, it lets it over torque. I don't know that I'm really sold on that or not, but this one, it's not gonna be in a, a real salty environment, so I'm not too worried about it. So we're just gonna go ahead and pop these in, and then we're gonna torque them to seven foot-pounds. I give this about a 40% chance of fixing the problem. I'm really leaning toward the injectors. So, let's fire it up, see what she does. That does not sound right. It sounds better, but she's still acting a little funny. So I am thinking that one of those injectors is acting strange. So let's crank it back up, let it idle, unplug it, and see if one, first if it drops out completely. Let's see what happens. Well, there's your answer right there. That's gonna be our problem, child. <laughs> I don't think there's any reason to pull the other side. Let's go ahead and get that fuel rail out. It'd be a lot simpler if I go ahead and remove these two brackets to get these out of the way so we can get to those lower bolts that hold in the fuel rail. Now the brackets, they're just being held in by T20 Torx. So let's go ahead and disconnect that other injector. There. Now we can get to those other T30 torques that are holding the fuel rail. Before we pull that last one, let's go ahead and disconnect the fuel line. Now you do want to have a uh, rag because fuel line probably still has pressure in it. Now let's
let's get that last T30 Torx. All right. Now, let's just get those injectors out. Ah, there we go. Had to put some muscle in on it. One. Two. Now we need to carefully clean out around there. Try not to push any of that dirt and grime down into the uh, intake. Now don't drop your Q-tip down in there because you're looking straight into the engine at this point. Okay, let's bring you around to the, to the table. We've got our fuel injector cleaner from Motion Pro. Neat little device. I've got several pigtails depending on what type of injectors I'm working with. So this is pretty easy to use. I'll go ahead and get one mounted in here. I don't know which one was which and see what it'll do. Really don't need to tighten this down much, as long as it's holding it down into the, uh, the base. That's really all you need to accomplish. All right, plug that in there. Let's see what we've got. A little bit of a strange pattern, but and most importantly, you can hear it clicking. Let's pop in the other one and see what we've got. Now I'm using the Honda carburetor cleaner. But Motion Pro also makes fuel injector cleaner, whichever one you want to go with. Uh-huh. Let's do that again. Yep. Thought I heard it click one time, but she is not active. So there, that's going to be our problem. Now the decision is now, do I replace just one of them or go ahead and replace the pair? Well, careful here because this has got pressure built up in it. There. Well, my train of thought on this is one's failed. That kind of tells me the other one's probably not far behind it. So we're going to go ahead and replace them both. But I feel very confident that this is going to straighten it out. Now it's just a reverse of what we did to take it apart. I think I'm going to spray a little bit of fuel injector cleaner on the O-rings just to make them easier to slide in there. Here's one. There's number two. Okay. Get our fuel rail back in. Tell you what, with this removable tray, it makes this so much easier to deal with. On the older Razor 900s, you'd have to take off the, the bed to pretty much to get to these. Our injectors. Make sure you hear that click. There we go. Fuel line. And then this retaining clip. Just pushed all the way on. There we go. Now let's prime up the fuel system a couple of times and see what she sounds like. Okay. Oh yeah. Now we've got something. All right guys, there you go. Pretty simple process. Just start on one end and work your way to the other, picking apart 
each part that's either working or it's not. Well, listen, speaking of parts, if you need any for your machine, why don't you come see us at partzilla.com and we can get you taken care of. If you have any questions or comments about this video, leave them in the section below and I'll do my best to answer them. And hey, if you like what you see, why don't you go ahead and hit that subscribe button. That way you can see whatever I'm working on next. We just want to say thank you for shopping here with us at Partzilla. We will see you in the next video. Y'all have a great day.